Okay, so um, this integral, although we, we uh, can find it using uh, partial fractions, uh, you'll notice that the degrees of the top and the bottom are the same. Now, uh, remember that you, uh, you need to make sure that the degree of the denominator is uh, larger than the numerator to be able to use uh, partial fraction decomposition. So if that isn't the case, then you need to rewrite this. And so um, to rewrite this so that the degree of the bottom is bigger than the top, um, you have to do uh, long division. So we're going to do that first. We're going to divide um, x squared minus x plus 1 into x squared plus x. OK, so um, x squared divided by x squared is 1. And so that gives us x squared um, and then plus x, but then you subtract, so um, that's minus, and that gives us, um, so these are uh, 0, and then minus 2x, and then plus 1. So um, you can't divide this any longer. So what this means is that this is equal to the integral of um, 1, which is the quotient, dx, and then uh, plus uh, negative 2x plus 1, which is the remainder over x squared plus x dx. And so that's what this, this um, fraction rewritten is the same as 1 plus 2, negative 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x. OK, now um, we're going to focus our attention on um, on the second integral, because obviously the first one we can find very easily. So we're going to do partial fraction decomposition on this. Um, let me uh, sort of block this out for now. OK, so if I'm going to do partial fraction decomposition on this, um, then what I have is that negative 2x uh, plus 1 over, and then let me factor the bottom, x times x plus 1. This is going to equal to a over x plus b over x plus 1. OK, now um, just like in uh, previous problems, multiply both sides by uh, the denominator to get rid of it. And so then what we get is uh, negative 2x plus 1 equals to a times x plus 1 plus bx. OK, um, now this is probably as good time as any to uh, show you the different, the other method of finding a and b. So um, from the previous problems we've done, you know that you could, um, here, why don't we, I'll just, I'll do it both ways so you can see. Um, so the way we've been doing it, we would set, for example, x equal to um, 0. So that would zero out this one. And so if you do that, you would get that, um, if you plug in zero here, you would get one is equal to a uh, times zero plus one, and this one would go to zero. So a would equal to one. And then you would zero out this one by letting x equal to negative one. And so if you let x equal to negative one, you would get, um, 2 plus 1 is 3. Whoa, that's a terrible color. Sorry. Let me get it. OK. 3 is equal to um, negative b. So b is equal to negative 3. So um, that's, you know, that's the way we've been doing it. But I want to show you a different way because we're going to need it later. I'm going to leave the left side alone. And um, then I'll distribute the a here, ax plus a plus bx. And so then what you do is you collect like coefficients. So for example, here, notice that um, you've got, um, you collect all the um, coefficients, all the terms with, um, with x's in front of them, you collect those and you factor out the x. So for example, this one would be uh, a plus b times uh, x, and then plus, and then this is the only um, coefficient left over, just a. 
Okay, and so then um, notice that you want these two sides to equal each other. And so for these two sides to equal each other, the coefficient in front of each variable has to match. And so, um, for example, the, the coefficient um, that's in front of x, which in, on the right side is a plus b, should equal to the coefficient in front of x on the left side, which is negative 2. So from that, what we get is that a plus b should equal to negative 2. And then um, the, uh, the constant term on the left side, positive 1, should equal to the constant term on the right, which is just a. And so from this, you get that a should equal to positive 1. And so you have, now this is a very simple case, um, but you have a system of equations where a is equal to 1. And so if a is equal to 1 and you plug in 1 into here, you would get that b is equal to negative 3. And notice that's exactly the same thing that we got here. So, you know, typically this method is a little quicker. You know, it's kind of like a quick and dirty um, way of uh, finding the... Um, the coefficients, but but when it's more complicated, when you have uh, usually uh, irreducible quadratic factors, um, you are going to have to use this method. So it's good to to know both. Okay. Anyways, we've got our um, coefficients. One a is one and b is negative three. So let's rewrite this. So this is equal to um, this is equal to the integral of one dx. So I'm just going to rewrite that one. And then um, plus, I'm going to write this one in red. So um, a over x or 1 over x, this is going to be the integral of 1 over x. So that's this one. And then um, plus b over x plus 1. So b is negative 3. So I'm going to write it as negative 3 times the integral of 1 over x plus 1. And don't forget your dx's. Okay, so off we go then. We're running out of room here a little bit, but that's okay. Should be enough. Let me uh, draw a little border here. Okay, so the antiderivative of this is just x plus the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log absolute value of x. And then minus 3, the antiderivative of 1 over x plus 1 is natural log absolute value of x plus 1 and then plus C, and that's it.